Welcome to Shark Week on Bloodbath and Beyond. Today we review Jurassic Shark, Dinosaur from the Deep. Directed by Brett Kelly, who also brought us another shark gem in Raiders of the Lost Shark, this film stars Emmanuel Carrere, Christine Eames, and Angela Parent. Jurassic Shark is about some goons or hoodlums, burglars even, that have stolen some kind of painting that's worth millions. They are on some island for some reason, and there's also a group of friends that are going to this island to protest a research facility. Unfortunately, that research facility was working on something and they drilled too deep and unleashed a 200 million year old Megalodon. So what do we like? I like that the Megalodon killed people. I like that because it was a Megalodon, I didn't have to bitch about the size of the shark depending on where it was. It was poorly composited the entire film and usually most sharks are. <laughs> and usually they're supposed to be regular sized sharks. This one's supposed to be huge, so it worked, I guess. We had babes in bikinis, uh, especially at the beginning. We had Ooh. two really hot babes. Yeah, Kayla and Sarah. Yeah. Like, top notch. Like, great start to a film. You want to start a movie off right? You show us two good looking girls, have them go in a bikini, and then introduce a Megalodon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, we're not gonna play this like this whole likes thing out. We're gonna go into the dislikes, and some of our dislikes might kind of be likes, but you know, let's go to the dislikes. I was not a fan of any of the characters in this film. I did not like a single person, didn't care if they survived, didn't care if they died. Their development was weak, their reasoning was poor, their acting was was subpar. It wasn't the worst, but, you know. There were some people in this movie that absolutely had horrid acting, though. Doug. Doug. Get a grip. I'm sorry about your brother, but it's just a fish. The shark itself, though he did go and kill people, it didn't look good doing it. It was a it lot was of... <laughs> It was a lot of like, I'm gonna stand in two feet of water and then drop to my knees and die. He's gonna make it! He's gonna make it! And like, the kills didn't even look good, like, not even when there's a shark involved. I mean, there's always sharks involved, but like, if it's coming from underneath the water, like, they'd rather just cut to somebody else and then cut back to just no person in the water anymore. Without blood in the water, without any splashes, without anything, it's just like, oh, that person's dead now. Like, a lot of kills were off screen, and it was really shitty. Yeah, like, the best kill they had in this movie was caused by a stick of dynamite. What the hell was that thing, man? Well, I've seen some good slow motion in shark movies. This time, not so good, because what happened is it's like they just learn how to use slow motion and they're like, let's just make things slow motion. And they'd have like slow motion reactions, like people just turning to the side or like there's a guy, he's just lighting dynamite to throw at the shark. But before he's actually throwing it, he's sitting there for like a minute in slow motion trying to light these stupid things. And there was a lot of points in this movie that were left out. And it was weird, because the dialogue doesn't match up with the actions that are happening. At one moment, they're having a showdown with the guns, and then the shark takes out Doug, and then when it goes back, they're like, You wasted all your bullets on a goddamn fish? But they never once shot at the shark. Oh, you're out of bullets, so now we can't attack each other, is essentially <laughs> what it came down to, because otherwise... If they didn't have that line of dialogue, I think our protagonist girls would have been able to take over this other girl. Yeah, easily. But thankfully she died in the most ridiculous fashion ever. The Megalodon jumped out of the water, land. ate somebody on land, and then landed back in the water. But the weird part is, this entire time, she was like 30 feet from water, and there is no water anywhere around her. Like, there's nothing in this radius. So... It really made no sense. Even the whole research facility thing was like just kind of tacked on for a reason for people to get from point A to point B. Once they got to this research facility, nothing happened. Like it was already blown up. There was like some doctor that was just bloody laying on the ground and had absolutely no reason to exist in this film. Yet he's like top build or like his assistant was top build in the credits. Which is absolutely ridiculous because she, I don't even think she had a line. Maybe one line. Maybe 10 seconds in the film and she's top build. Dr. Grant, what is it? we can't let you proceed with the second stage. 
We've already had this discussion. All safety protocols have been met. We even have a potential awkward rape scene that shouldn't have been in this film. The antagonist, like, shoes him away, and the girls have this conversation about, like... From one girl to another? Thank you. It was really weird, and it's not something that you ever see with, like, an antagonist and a protagonist, like, hey, thanks, I, you just saved me from rape. Yeah, one of your henchmen was about to rape me? Appreciate it. This film probably had some of the worst sound design I have ever heard. It had girls splashing in the water that it just sounded like someone recorded someone splashing in a tub. That scene specifically was on for two to three minutes of them just splashing each other so awkwardly. Talking about the splashy scene, the walking through the forest scene. Idiot! They've gone into the woods! Holy shit! It's like, hey, we have a really cool shot of a defocused forest and a close-up foreground. Let's have, like, somebody walk into this spot. Actually, let's have six people walk into this spot slowly. It's just, Jesus Christ. A lot of the things in this movie ran way too long, and the movie's only an hour long. There is 15 minutes of an end credits. Like, because the credits actually roll in a really awkward speed to just to make up 15 extra minutes to make it a feature length film. Like, that just seems like a really shady fucking move. Like, this whole situation felt like a shady move. Sorry, that was uncalled for. No, you're right. Now it's time for our final thoughts and ratings. Jurassic Shark is a terrible movie. For the most part, it's not worth watching. It's just people walking around for a really long time and they meet some other people and then all six of them walk around for a long time. The sharks are terrible, the kills are bad. We sat here for four and a half minutes trying to come up with items to use for our ratings because it's just really just a barren landscape of a movie, really. <laughs> I'm pulling out straws here. I don't know, it's just bad. So I'm gonna give this half an extremely convincing morning your brother reaction out of five. Jerry. Can't believe it. Jurassic Shark is not an enjoyable shark movie. It barely shows the shark actually killing people. When you do see it, the B-roll of the shark is just the same shot over and over again. Look, there he is! Shark Jerry, shark! I would not recommend this movie. So with that being said, I'm gonna have to give this film 0.5 free willies out of five. As always, thank you for watching. Like this video and comment below with your thoughts on the film if you've seen it. If you haven't, there are links in the description where you can find it. Kings of Horror has it on YouTube for free, legally, so check it out. And if this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel, stay updated with everything Bloodbath and Beyond, and stay tuned for more shark reviews.